what's good y'all different style of video today so this is my first reaction type video let me know how y'all like this format if you guys want to see more videos like this make sure to drop a like drop a comment but in this video i'm gonna be reacting to father spyro spy i don't know his full name you guys but he's a orthodox christian and i'm a christian too but i'm really not like a denominational person you know what i mean like I couldn't really tell you what Orthodox versus Baptist, Methodist, all that type of stuff. I just believe in Jesus, right? So I haven't watched this video in its full length yet. So I'm reacting just live. I haven't seen this video, but it's about cannabis and Christianity. Okay, so a lot of Christians still smoke weed. A lot of Christians still smoke. I was in that camp, you guys. I've been a Christian going on a year now. I dedicated my life to Christ in the beginning of 2023, but before that, I was an atheist, okay? And right now, I'm only like two months and some change sober. So I didn't decide to fully quit smoking until the week before I got baptized. That's when I decided, okay, you know what? I can't sit here and, and smoke and then say that I'm living for the Lord, right? So this ain't about, you know, my journey, my testimony, but I thought this would be a really good video to react to because a lot of Christians smoke weed, a lot of Christians smoke, a lot of Christians drink. And something that was something I struggle with is even in the Bible, you know, like Jesus drinks wine, you know, like they say, you know, everything on earth, God created for us to enjoy all the animals, all the plants on the earth. Right. But it also says, like, don't be a drunkard. It also says be sober minded. It also says be vigilant. OK, because you never know when Christ is coming back. So I think it's just a very important message, especially for a lot of young people. So without further ado, we're going to get into it. We're going to get right into it, you guys. Let me uh, cannabis and Christianity. When we're considering cannabis or marijuana, we need to understand, first of all, that cannabis and its use is completely at odds with the Christian life. It's he said it's completely at odds with the Christian life. Completely incompatible. Incompatible. With living an orthodox Christian life. Now, there are many liberal, modern groups that may disagree with this, but this is the orthodox perspective. And so... Okay, and that's like I said earlier, I'm not an orthodox Christian, okay? So I'm just... I follow Jesus. I don't really claim any denomination. I just say that I'm a Christian, right? I think I go to like a technically Baptist church, but I really couldn't tell y'all the differences between all that. So this is the Orthodox perspective. So I'm assuming Orthodox is like, you know, the traditional roots of Christianity, right? But interested to hear his perspective. Orthodox Christians. This talk really is an explanation of the spiritual harm that the person who consumes cannabis places themselves. The contemporary world particularly in America, where many U.S. states are now legalizing the use and sale of cannabis. The contem And, hey, I, want, I wanted to speak on that part as well. He said that a lot of U.S. states are legalizing cannabis, and that's true. That's something that I've started to realize as a 21-year-old, guys. Weed is the new cigarettes. And what I mean by that is just because it's legal, just because it's popular, like, you know, back when I was even like a little kid, like a teenager, smoking weed was kind of like, you know, it wasn't really cool. Like smoking cigarettes ain't cool. You know what I'm saying? But now it's like smoking weed is like cool. Like everybody does it. You know what I'm saying? This is just a little weed, stuff like that. That's the same stuff that they talk about cigarettes and nicotine. And a lot of people say, oh, you know, cigarettes, I smoke weed, but not tobacco. Well, tobacco is a natural plant just like weed is nicotine is a natural chemical just like thc is a natural chemical you guys so just because something is natural it came from nature that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good thing that it's the right thing and especially you guys can look into it the way they put all different types of chemicals and carcinogens into cigarettes don't think just because you buying that weed from a dispensary don't think they ain't sprayed it with all types of chemicals, all types of pesticides, all types of stuff that you really shouldn't be inhaling. Like, I haven't smoked in two and a half months, you guys. I'm still coughing up black tar. 
I'm still coughing up just black stuff. You know what I'm saying? So very interesting point he made. That's something I've noticed as well. A lot of states are legalizing it, and that's almost like like a false sense of security, right? Like alcohol is legal, but that doesn't mean, you know, it's safe to just go drink and drive, right? Like alcohol is legal. Weed is legal. All these things are legal, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's healthy for you, that it's good for you, and all that type of stuff, guys. So just interesting thing he just said there. The world is completely at odds with orthodox thinking about this. It's one of the examples of the way in which orthodox teaching is completely in conflict with what the world is telling us. And it's up to us to decide who we will hear. Will we listen to the world or will we listen to the orthodox faith? If we desire God, if we desire to make any kind of spiritual progress in the spiritual life, then we must understand that cannabis, marijuana, is a barrier. A barrier to any... It's a barrier. It's a barrier. It's just something in the way, you guys. If you want to be the best version of yourself, that's part of why I quit smoking weed. You have to put the drugs down, the alcohol down, the, the social media down, whatever you're addicted to. If it's adult media, if it's drinking, if it's smoking, gossip, judging people, you can be addicted to anything, guys. You can be addicted to all types of things. But if you want to be the best version of yourself, if you want to be the best fruit that you can be for God, you have to put this stuff down, you guys. It's a barrier. It's something in the way. This is something I said in my last video about smoking weed. You can survive while smoking. You can survive as an addict. Okay, there's plenty of people who they smoke every single day. They still go to work. They still pay their bills on time. They're still functioning, right? So you can survive as an addict, but you will never thrive as an addict. That's something that a lot of people don't understand. You can live your life and, and get by, but you're never going to really be the best that you could be as long as you're smoking, as long as you're drinking, okay? As long as you're doing any type of substance, you guys, you can get by, but you can't thrive and be the best version of yourself. Kind of spiritual progress. Now, there will be some people seeking God who now begin to say, why? Why would this be so? Many people, when they hear this, will be resistant to it because they mm -hmm. enjoy it. Mm -hmm. They enjoy the feelings that cannabis brings to them. Yep. There may be those who, though they may say they are not physically addicted, will have a, a spiritual... <laughs> he said those who say they're not physically addicted. Man, people will lie and lie to themselves all day talking about I'm not addicted to weed. Well, go ahead and put it down then. Go ahead and put it down. If you're not addicted to it, then let it go. See what happens. See what happens when you can't sleep at night, when you're having night sweats, when, when you're waking up all, all night sweaty, all sweating in the bed, when you can't go to sleep at night, when you just get angry. Act like you're not addicted then. Or mental addiction to it mentally they are resistant to this message cannabis in fact has been used in many non-christian religions throughout the history of time it's listed as one of the the five sacred plants mm. in the hindu vedas see it's i don't know about that i know with um with shiva and shiva is said by many hindus to have used cannabis as part of the process of meditation, entering into a meditative state. That's interesting. I don't know too much about Hindu or Hinduism, but I'm pretty sure Shiva is the god. Like Hindus, they have multiple different gods, like the Greek gods and stuff. But I'm pretty sure Shiva in Hindu is the god of creation and destruction. So that's something that I've learned in my Christian life. Sometimes you have to die in order to be reborn. Okay, if you plant a seed, the seed has to die in order to be reborn and sprout its new life, okay, as a new plant. If there's if there's things of like aspects of your life, you have to kill those aspects of your life so that you can be reborn into your ultimate form. The caterpillar has to die in order to become a butterfly. Okay, so 
that's something that I've always, like, I do know a little bit about Hindu, I guess, because I know about Shiva. But Shiva's the god of creation and destruction. So he'll say, like, shall we destroy the mountain to create a beach? Now let me destroy the beach to create a field or a meadow, you know, stuff like that. So creation and destruction is not always a bad thing, you guys. You have to destroy the bad parts to create the good parts, right? Many other religions, too. Um, Zoroastrianism. Um, I don't know what that Sufis is. Say cannabis allows them to enter into the kind of spiritual state that they are seeking. And, of course, many may pagan shamanistic cults and religions use cannabis as part of this process of entering into what is really an altered state an altered state of consciousness which which they believe and argue is a spiritual state this is at odds with orthodox christian teaching why then is orthodox christianity opposed to cannabis well in the writings of the church fathers one of the, the main obstacles we're told to any kind of spiritual development is fantasy. Hmm. The use of the imagination, particularly in prayer, opens us up to all kinds of deception, spiritual, demonic deception. The imagination is spiritually dangerous. It opens us up to the demonic realm because it is at that peripheral part of the self that the demons are able to tempt us and create fantasy. Now, that is something that I definitely believe in. Like, even the best of us, maybe you don't act on it, but you definitely imagine certain thoughts, certain uh, scenarios, certain situations, right, that really ain't the best, you know, thing to be thinking about, really ain't the best situation you would want to find yourself in. So I just thought it was interesting that he pointed that out that demons are able to use your imagination and your thoughts and your fantasies, your dreams, in order to tempt you. It's interesting to think about. And one of the main effects, of course, of cannabis is, is the stimulation of fantasy. Mm. So when a person uses cannabis, this, develop, this, this encouragement of fantasy is really directly at odds with what the church fathers describe as a true spiritual condition. In fact, sobriety of the mind is one of the key essential components of essential. the spiritual life. See, that's what I was saying. It's one of the things that I've learned in my Christian journey. It's important to be sober-minded. We're supposed to be vigilant. And maybe I'll put the little, um, I'll put the verses up here if I can remember them. But it's basically talking about like, like the master that that left his um, house and had his different servants, like um, the master left and told his servant, you know, do this, have it clean when I come back or whatever. And then the servant didn't do it. So the master came back, you know, like a day or two early when he wasn't supposed to. Right. And the servant got caught off guard. But he had another servant who did, as he said, like, I think maybe one was like the main house server and the other was like the guest house or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, multiple servants doing multiple different jobs. But basically the point is you don't know when the master is going to come back. We don't know when Jesus Christ is going to come back. And that's something that I think about personally because I truly do believe that the rapture is going to happen in my lifetime. I'm 21 years old, you guys. Me personally, I'd be surprised if we make it to 2030 without Jesus Christ coming back just with the way the world's going. But I think, like they say, he's going to come as a thief in the night. He's not going to tell us when he's coming back. Nobody truly knows the exact time. It's going to be when nobody expects it. So how bad would that be? Like, this is something I've thought about. How crazy would it be if the time the rapture actually does happen, you're high off your ass just off some edibles or you're just sloppy drunk. You're tripping on mushrooms. That's the time Jesus comes back. So you always want to stay sober minded. You always want to remain vigilant, you guys, because the devil walk around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So you have to remain vigilant. And part of that is, like he says, staying sober minded. You have to be good minded. You have to be in the best state of mind that you can be when it comes to spiritual warfare, when it comes to being the best version of yourself. So that's a really good point by him.
Our fathers warn us against everything that will distract us from this pursuit of, of sobriety of mind. It reduces, cannabis reduces our ability to develop and maintain sobriety of mind. Mm. True. A sobriety which is a spiritual sobriety. And the fathers do identify this as a, one of the main impediments to spiritual change, to, to, to perception of truth. When our mind is filled with fantasy and imaginings, then to identify truth, the revealed truth of God, becomes impossible. Hmm. Now, some argue that cannabis opens us up to the spiritual insights that they believe they are capable of, or even, dare I say, visions. Some people will claim, particularly in these shamanistic cults, to have visions under the influence of cannabis, marijuana. St. John Cassian warns us that to attempt to open the noetic eyes through drugs is sorcery. Mm, true. It is sorcery. God has dimmed the noetic sight to protect us. It is for our benefit. There That's what they be saying about that DMT stuff, you guys. I don't know if you guys, you know, know too much about DMT, different psychedelics, but that's exactly what they be saying about DMT. They be going into that, to that psychedelic realm. They be going into that realm, seeing demons, seeing different entities, right? And so I do believe that there is a spiritual realm. I do believe that we have a third eye that allows us to see into that realm. But it's only through the grace of God, you guys, if you're going to walk that way alone, like if you're going to astral project, have your soul leave your body and you think that the demons ain't going to see that. Especially as a Christian, especially as a Christian, you guys, when we have the light of Lord Jesus Christ around us. When you see a star up in the dark night sky, it stands out. We can't see the stars without the brightness, right? So when you're a light and you're shining in a room of darkness around people who all they know is darkness. They have to see you. You understand what I'm saying? So that's a really good point as well, you guys. When you're doing something like that as a human, keep in mind, even if you don't believe in God, you're still created in the image of God. So just an entity, a, a demon seeing you, seeing your spirit, it automatically like triggers them a certain type of way. You get what I'm saying? Like That's one of the things they say about demons, why they hate us so much. Because every time the devil looks at you, he's reminded of God. So you think that when you're you, when you're opened up into the spiritual realm, you think that it's all just sunshine and, and rainbows? Because it ain't that way in the physical world either. It's not just all, you know, candy canes and lollipops. It's a lot of real dark stuff that goes on here too. So imagine in the spiritual realm when the demons see your spirit, when they see somebody open to the open into the spiritual realm with no protection with no guidance it's very very important you guys our great ascetics those who have progressed in the spiritual life for whom these visions are revealed but for the majority of us it is hugely dangerous mm. to do anything to artificially open noetic sight right it leaves dangerous. us spiritually vulnerable and St. John Cassian describes it as sorcery sorcery and this is supported in in the fifth chapter of the the letter to the Galatians in verse 20 the word there that is translated in English oh, um, had to handle something real quick but the show must go on so we picking up right where we left off a sorcery the warning against sorcery in Greek the word is pharmakia pharmakia Pharmacy. So we see a direct link, even in the scriptures, particularly in the church fathers, between the use of chemicals and altered states of minds and sorcery. See, that's interesting as well. The root word of pharmacy, pharmaceuticals, drugs, like he said, mind altering chemicals. The root of that is sorcery. So just something to think about, you guys. Next time you want to get high, next time you want to get drunk or, or trip, 
that's something to think about. To enter into the state, the church fathers warn, removes us from true prayer. The experiences, the feelings that we may gain are not true prayer. They are false, they are fake, counterfeit. We must guard ourselves against all of this because it is demonic deception. Deception. Into the state removes us from prayer and from God. It substitutes the reality of encounter with God and spiritual growth with these illusions, with feelings, with falsehood. It creates within us spiritual confusion. A spiritual confusion that can be to such a degree that the person experiencing it doesn't even recognize the confusion for what it is. This now, what does that sound like, you guys? Spiritual confusion. Spiritual addiction to the point where the person doesn't even recognize they're addicted. That's the thing that's scariest to me about weed, you guys. Like I said earlier, you can survive, but you can't thrive. Like, if you smoke cigarettes, maybe one day you'll be 60 years old or 40, 50 years old and you get lung cancer. Right, that's what happens if you smoke cigarettes. But if you smoke weed your whole life, maybe you're gonna be 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, and you realize you didn't accomplish the things that you set out to accomplish in life. You couldn't succeed at your dreams. You didn't go as hard as you could have. You weren't there when you could have been, when you should have been. There's things that you missed out on. Because that's something that weed does, you guys. It makes it okay it makes it fun to be bored if you're just smoking dope all day you can sit here and watch spongebob a kid's cartoon and that'll entertain you you know what i'm saying like you can just sit there and eat ramen noodles just eat 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 you get the munchies right you can just sit there and eat and that'll entertain you you can just sit there and forget about all the dreams that you had all the goals that you have all the problems that you have you can just sit there and forget about it you can just smoke it all away, right? But a lot of people don't realize you're smoking away your potential. You're smoking away the man that you could be in the mirror. You're smoking away the woman that you could be. The mother, the father that you could be. We're all sons and daughters. The son, the daughter that you could be to your family. The brother or sister you could be in your family. You're smoking that away too. Don't forget that. It's its nature. The true nature of this confusion the feelings, the fake experiences become, to the person who's convinced of them, the reality of spirituality. Mm. And it is deception. It is demonic deception. Of course, cannabis also has a, 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 a physical impact as well as the spiritual. And of course, we can't separate them completely. We are one whole person. And so when we affect ourselves physically, we are affecting ourselves spiritually. Real talk. The use of cannabis, categorically, it is known that it suppresses brain activity. The function of the brain is suppressed by cannabis. Especially for young people. Like I'm 21, you guys. I smoke for... Four or five years since I was like 16, 17, I was smoking heavy. So my brain is still developing, right? That's stuff that I'm not going to get back. You've been smoking 20 years. That's stuff in your brain that you're not going to get back. You understand what I'm saying? Especially for young people. This is stuff that you're not going to get back. It's suppressing your brain function. And yeah, like it sounds like a joke, you know, when you're high, you're stupid, right? But it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that, you guys. Not only does it affect you spiritually, like he's saying, it affects you physically. Like I said, you guys, I haven't smoked in two and a half months, but I'm still coughing stuff up. My lungs still aren't at 100%, you guys. I don't know how long it's going to take. And we're all one complete system, like he's saying. Something that affects you physically, affects you spiritually, and it definitely affects you mentally and emotionally. And financially, because you're spending money on that. So just keep that in mind. The next time you want to go buy another ounce or three, five, whatever, just keep that in mind. The brain has been 
scanned countless cases of in the tens of thousands of people have had brain scans and it has been shown that cannabis ages the brain prematurely this is not something many people realize the number one cause of premature brain aging is schizophrenia that can Damn. age the brain by up to 10 years Damn. prematurely but of all the different things that can prematurely age the brain alcohol tobacco other diseases cannabis is second cannabis is the second most aging impact on the human brain wow we need to take this on board the reason for this is because the use of cannabis slows down the flow of blood to the brain and this Definitely. has a physical detrimental effect of course so it lowers blood flow and as it lowers blood flow the brain is being damaged it has a permanent impact on the physiology of the brain if we are to treat the the body as the temple of God then yes there are many things that we should guard against we should guard against excess of alcohol of sugars and salts and all these things that will harm us but unless even alcohol which be can become habitual in alcoholism frequent and constant use of cannabis even twice a week will permanently change the brain the focus on that you got frequent chronic use of cannabis even just twice a week and I wasn't the type of person who would smoke twice a week I'm smoking a couple times a day you know what I'm saying like there are people I know that only smoke at nighttime there are people that only smoke on the weekends stuff like that even something like that will hold you back from being the best version of yourself the best you that you could be and like I said if you can survive like that Smoking once or twice a week is just, you know, your little sweet treat. You can survive like that, but you're never going to thrive like that. And I don't know about you, but I want to thrive in my life. I want to be the best that I can be. I want to do the best that I can do. When I'm on my deathbed, I don't want to have no regrets. I don't want to look at myself in the mirror like, damn, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have went harder in this area. I wish I would have done this, you know, more. I wish I would have said this. I wish I would have stopped, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to do that. I want to say, you know what? I had a good run. I did the best that I can, man. If you play sports, man, I left my heart on this court. You understand what I'm saying? Win or lose, I left my heart on this court. That's what I want to say when I die, you guys. And smoking weed is something that I cannot do and sit here and act like I'm doing my best because I know deep down in my heart that I'm not can recover from other things but cannabis leaves its permanent mark permanent it has a detrimental effect and, and of course teenage use of cannabis it has been shown through many many pieces of research that those who use cannabis in their teenage years are far more likely to suffer from depression and suicide wow. even in their early 20s I believe it so we have to be careful what we're facing here when we talk about cannabis is really the wisdom of the world versus the wisdom of God the wisdom of God revealed to us through the fathers through the teachings of the church we are called always in every aspect of our lives to repent to be obedient to the teachings of the church because this is the way that God has revealed the road to salvation to us and if we listen to the wisdom of the world we are listening to the voice of death the keep that in mind you guys that's something else that I heard recently and I maybe I'll do a video reacting to that as well but the things of this world what the world wants you to do it only leads to destruction and death you can love this world. You can love the things of this world. The things of this world, it can feel good. It can feel nice. But at the end of the day, it leads towards death and destruction. But you can place that same love, that same energy that you give this world 
you can give that love back to God, back to Lord Jesus Christ, and he'll give you eternal life and infinite love forever. So which one are you going to are you going to dedicate your life on this path that leads towards destruction? Or do you want everlasting life and everlasting love? It's a pretty clear choice for me. Voice of life is there found in the teachings of the church. Now, some people will convince themselves that cannabis is harmless. But this is self-deception. Self-deception. Do not be deceived by the things of this world. Let us know with clarity in our hearts the use of cannabis is a sin. And if Facts. we use cannabis, we must repent. The source of self-delusion and demonic deception is the false thought. And I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this saint's name. But... Just keep that in mind. That's the interesting quote. The source of self-delusion and demonic deception is false thought. You think you're not addicted. You think you're a good person. You think you're doing the right thing. You think there's no harm in it. You think it's just one more hit. You never know. You never know how you may be deluding yourself. Not just mentally, but spiritually. And this is something I told my bro the other day. Your spirit is really in charge of everything. Okay, like your mind is over your body, mind over matter, right? Your body can feel like you're about to give up, but your mind can will it to do more, right? Well, your spirit is the one in charge of your mind. So maybe you feel like you're at your wit's end. You're almost losing your mind. Don't know what to think. Excuse me. Don't know who to believe, who to trust, what to love, where where to think about me, where to put your thoughts. Well, your spirit can get that in check. Your spirit is ultimately in control of your mind, which is ultimately in control of your body. And it's all one complete system. Like he was saying, you can do something physically in your body that makes you feel better mentally that will help heal you spiritually. You can do something spiritually that'll degrade your spirit, that'll deteriorate your mind, okay, and, and hurts your body. So it's all it's all connected, you guys. We're all connected in every way, in every way. I don't know if he's gonna say anything else. Where there is pride, and at the same time, one has a vision. If you're having a prideful vision. It cannot be from God, but by all means, from the evil one. I'm telling y'all, that's why I made a video on that pride. It is not a coincidence that that whole movement is called pride. And pride is the deadliest sin. Pride is what got Satan kicked out of heaven. Because he thought he could be as high as the most high. He didn't even want to just be equals. He wasn't even that arrogant to think he could be an equal to God. He wanted to be even higher. He was that arrogant. He was that prideful. So he went from wanting to be the most high, and God made sure to put his ass at the lowest of lows. So that's what pride can do for you guys. And this quote is basically saying, when there's pride, if you're having a prideful vision, that ain't from God. God's not telling you to be prideful, okay? God wants us to be confident, you know, believe in our, God doesn't want us to think lowly of ourselves, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't want you to be depressed or, you know, anxious and worried and stuff like that. He doesn't want you to have low self-esteem. Normal confidence is fine, you know, you're supposed to believe in yourself. You're supposed to, you know, believe that you're strong, that you can do things. You can make a change in this world. You're supposed to believe that. Confidence is not a bad thing, but that pride and that arrogance, if you're having a vision and this arrogance, it's prideful. You're having dreams that are prideful. Pray about that because trust me, that ain't from God. That is not from God right there. Let me see if there's another quote. 
So yeah, that's about all for this video. It was no other quotes. Let me know how y'all like this style. Make sure y'all like the video. Go down to the comment section. Comment what you thought. Comment how you feel, right? I don't care if you just comment an emoji. Just go down and comment something. I thought this was a really great video, especially for other young people like me. If you're young and you're struggling with smoking, with drinking, with partying, with, you know, adult content, with caffeine, stuff like that, pray about it, you guys. I'm telling y'all, I'm not making this video about my personal testimony, but God is the one who saved me from addiction, you guys. Like, no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The only way I was able to put those drugs down is because God is the one who lifted me up. So if you're struggling with a substance, if you're struggling with, with your spirit, if you're struggling with your mental, go to the go to the one who will give the weary and the burden rest, okay? He'll give you rest. You don't have to deal with that addiction anymore. You don't have to deal with that depression anymore. You don't have to deal with that anxiety anymore, guys. Give it to the most high, true and living God. So I hope this video helps somebody. I'm going to leave the full video. I'm going to leave the description to the original video. And um, I, forgot his, I forgot his name, Father Spyro or something. I'm going to leave his full channel in the description. So make sure y'all go check him out. Go drop a like on his video as well. Other than that, hope everybody has a blessed and a Merry Christmas. Peace.